remember the date very well. The reason I remember the date is because a few years back, Scientific American called us and asked us to do an article for them. And they asked some of the same questions you're asking. How do we get interested in the field? Why did we start doing some research in this area? And it was a very simple thing. Uh, in the 1960s and late 50s, everyone was interested in calcium. We're still interested in calcium today. Calcium is the big thing. And uh, we wanted, why didn't anyone look at magnesium? Magnesium is in the blood. It's, it's a very important element. It regulates uh, more than 325 biochemical reactions in the body, more than any mineral. Calcium doesn't regulate more than 60 or 75 reactions. So we were intrigued, and we were interested in blood vessels. That's been a major interest in cardiac cells as well. So what we decided to do, we were a very simple experiment. We said, well, maybe something would happen if we remove magnesium from it an extracellular environment where we just bathe isolated blood vessels. Take blood vessels out from various animals. At that time, we didn't do any human studies. They came later. And we assumed that when we took magnesium away, not much was going to happen. But lo and behold, a surprising thing took place. The blood vessels started to spontaneously contract. Oh, wow. And we first didn't believe this. My wife, when I told her these experiments, she was at home at the time. She didn't believe it either. So we didn't start publishing our first paper on magnesium until about 1967, 68, because she made us continue to repeat these studies on different blood vessels to find out if this was what we call an artifact, an artificial result, right. or a true finding. Right. And lo and behold, we not only found that to be the case, but that some blood vessels became exquisitely sensitive to lowering magnesium, particularly blood vessels in the brain, blood vessels in the heart, and blood vessels in the umbilical placental area of pregnant women. Right. And this started to intrigue us, and because of those early initial findings, and because of the impetus of Scientific American to do this article for them, we started to revisit the historical perspective of all of this, and we started to take note of how we got from where we were to where we now are. Right, right. And it's been a, a, a lot of fun up mm -hmm. until this period of time. So it goes back, actually, I'm sorry to say, about 43 years. You know, it's, 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 <clears throat> we had a similar thing even in smoking. Uh, they knew that smoking caused cancer for well, almost 43 years before they put a sign on the pack. <laughs> you know, right. It took exactly. that long exactly. for people to accept that this was and causing As you know, yeah. people are still not accepting this. And why aren't they accepting it? You sure. and I both know. Sure. But our audience probably doesn't know. We should tell them that. But there are 130 medical schools in the United States. Um experience and coursework in nutrition. The other 110 do not. So what do we have today? <clears throat> we have a patient going to see his physician, usually his internist or his family physician, and he or she asks his doctor, what should I take in terms of my diet? I read the Atkins diet. I read this diet. I read a Dean Ornish diet. What do you recommend? And unfortunately, most physicians today are in the dark. They don't really know how to advise patients on what to take, and, and, and this is the major problem that we're confronted with, education. Our physicians today are not being educated properly. They have no coursework to speak of in nutrition. So as a consequence, they have no one to go to. And the second problem is, as you well know, magnesium has been around for thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. Our planet has a tremendous amount of magnesium on the Earth's crust, right. magnesium silicates. So... This has been there since time immemorial. Why? Because all the life on this planet is due to photosynthesis. Actually. And there are 12 enzyme enzyme. When you say photosynthesis, system. maybe I'd explain that to the Photosynthesis is a mechanism whereby green plants take in carbon dioxide, water, make oxygen. And in order to do that, they need a particular pigment called chlorophyll. And that biochemical machinery requires 12 enzymatic steps to produce the oxygen that we need to breathe. And what's amazing is that all 12 of those steps require magnesium. <laughs> so and without those, magnesium, no oxygen. No oxygen. There are no life on this planet. There are no plant life came long before animal life. So we are really a product of these plants and the oxygen that we have. So magnesium is much more fundamental than people believe it. You know, I, before we go on, because this is so intriguing, um, 
I might have mentioned to you before, uh, in African Americans, um, before they could even see doctors, they used to feel the throbbing in their head due to um, high blood pressure. Uh, when you were talking about the contraction of arteries or vessels due to the lack of magnesium, well, they used to use Epsom salt and grapefruit juice. Well, drinking that, just drinking, the mag Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. But just drinking the magnesium in the, in the form of Epsom salts, which I'm not saying they should do today uh, with all the excellent medications we do have, the fact is that their blood pressure would come down because they would feel the results of their blood pressure coming down from just the head, not even taking a blood pressure. And now, of course, in proximity of pregnancy, you and women coming with a very high blood pressure to save the woman and the baby, what do they do? They give mag sulfate directly into the vein. Right. And so here for, I don't know how many, maybe a hundred years, here we were using Epsom salt, not realizing it was the magnesium that was causing dilatation of the blood vessels instead of constriction, so the blood pressure would come that's, down. That's correct. You know, that so is this, is, this shows you how folklore medicine, just right. by experimentation of folklore medicine, comes right up into today's world. Well, as, as you know, in England, Epsom salts comes from Epsom Downs. It was discovered there, basically. And uh, people go there still today yes. for those baths. And when they immerse themselves in those baths, like they do in the Dead Sea, for example, which is high concentration of magnesium oh, sulfate, yes, right. the body starts feeling not only warm, but totally relaxed. Oh, yeah. So magnesium not only acts on blood vessels all over the body, but it has tremendous soothing abilities on the brain yes. and on the central nervous system as well. And it modulates the neurotransmitters that control all nervous activity. And when you have enough magnesium, you are feeling more relaxed. Oh, yes. So today, as you know, people become depressed to take a lot of antidepressants. Oh, yes. And there's a big marketplace for antidepressants. Sure. Sure. But what a lot of physicians don't realize is if you give people enough magnesium, they will also become, they will also sleep very well at night. Oh, yeah. Magnesium is a very good soporific. Mm -hmm. So it has wonderful properties. And people who are insomnia can take magnesium, if they take enough of it, they will be relaxed. Their whole body will feel relaxed. So it has wonderful attributes, and that's still today they go to these baths for these wonderful effects of magnesium. Well, you know, 